thanks for watching our video. In today's video, we're going to discuss dual booting. First off, what is a dual boot system? A dual boot system is a system that has more than one operating system on it, and you can boot into either one when you turn the computer on. Why would we want to use it? Uh, there's numerous reasons. Uh, one of the reasons that jumps out at me is the reason I use the dual booting options, and that is because I can't do everything in Linux that I need to do on a daily basis. I still need Windows. So I make a smaller Windows partition, then I do my Linux partition, and I can just hop into either one as I need. Uh, it becomes very versatile, and it becomes handy. With a dual boot system being set up, it also grants you the opportunity to learn more about Linux before solely migrating to Linux if that's your end goal. I usually do a couple of things prior to installing any dual boot. First off, I need to take into consideration what version of Linux am I going to be using. In this video, I'll be installing Ubuntu 11.10 alongside Windows 7. If you followed our blog and our YouTube channel, you'll know that Ubuntu 11.10 isn't necessarily my favorite Ubuntu release, but it is the most recent release. It's probably the, one of the more popular operating systems out there. If you're looking at dual booting, that's probably the option you're considering. With that being said, Ubuntu is not the only version of Linux out there. There's numerous other versions, and they can all be set up the same way, uh, minus a little Ubuntu only way we'll cover towards the end of the video. The second thing I typically do is run a defrag on the hard drive. That way there's no fragmented data out there, the free space is truly free, and we can get a clean setup that way. One of the prerequisites that you need to take into consideration as well is you need to make sure that you have Windows already installed. I have attempted to install a dual boot system with Linux installed first, Windows second, and I've had some problems with that in the past. Uh, typically when it comes to the bootloader. So I've, from my experience I've found that it's easier if you have Windows already installed. You can defrag it, go in, add another partition to the hard drive, and set that up as your Linux partition. So let's go ahead and jump in and defrag our hard drive right fast and then we'll proceed with the installation. Okay, as you can see I've already launched the defrag minter to save a little time. If you're using Windows 7 as I am in this video to access the disk defrag minter tool Click on the start orb, go to all programs, the accessories folder, scroll down to see system tools, and disk defragmenter. You can take that option and it will launch the defragmentation tool. I usually recommend to put the live CD in your CD or DVD drive just before you reboot your computer. That way you make sure that the computer comes up and it can read that live CD without rebooting itself back into Windows. If you try to do it the other way around, you may not be fast enough and your computer will boot straight into Windows. With that being said, we'll go ahead and hang tight until the defragmentation is done. Then we'll go ahead and proceed with the install. All right, now that the defragmentation is done, we can go ahead and click Close. Remember, go ahead and put your live CD in the CD or DVD drive on your computer and come down and reboot your computer. Let's take Restart. And as you can see, we're now booting into Ubuntu. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to the prompt where we can choose to either try the live CD or we can go ahead and install the system. Once the live CD has loaded up, you'll be greeted with this splash screen. You can select your language. You can either try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. If you're very certain that you want to go ahead and install it, you can take the install option. If you would like to try out the live CD first, you can go ahead and try Ubuntu. We'll go ahead and click through Try Ubuntu because you can still install the operating system from the live environment as well. So we'll go ahead and step through that. Now a quick note, this video will cover setting up the partition and initiating the install. This video will not step all the way through the install. Alright, once you're inside the live CD, you can go ahead and double click the Install Ubuntu icon. This will launch the installer. Just go ahead and click your language or leave it at the default. Click Continue and it'll give you a couple prerequisites. This is the exact same process you would use as if you were installing it straight from just on a clean hard drive. You can go ahead and take to download the updates while installing and you can install the third party software or codex at this time. And you can go ahead and take those if you like. If not you can leave them blank. We'll click continue. Where this deviates from the standard installation procedure is when it comes to the option to pick your hard drive or your partitioning. Now, typically, you just take use the entire disk and install it to install on a clean hard drive where it's going to be the only installation. You will notice that we have three options. One is to install Ubuntu alongside Windows 7. We can replace Windows 7 with Ubuntu, or we can do something else. 
Typically with previous versions of Ubuntu, you can go something else. If you took that option, then you could specify how large you want your partition table to be. You can go ahead and set your file system uh, and go that way. In this situation, I'm going to go ahead and take install Ubuntu alongside Windows 7 and click continue. Now do note you're going to need at least 5 gigabytes of storage for Ubuntu. So uh, what this will do is go ahead and create the partitioning for you. To manipulate the different sizes, you simply click the blank space between the two systems. You have your files, which is your Windows partition, and you also have Ubuntu. This is one that's going to be installed. Up here you can select the drive. If you have more than one hard drive installed, you can select another drive as well. I only have one drive in this machine. It's a 25 gig setup. So let's just go ahead and leave it somewhere about there. So we have 16 gigs per system. You can take the install now option. You can go ahead and proceed through the install. Okay, continue. From here the installation will continue just as it would if you were installing Ubuntu on a clean hard drive. When you're prompted to reboot the computer, go ahead and reboot it, take out the live CD, and you'll be prompted to pick either Windows or the Ubuntu. In some rare cases you will bump into a situation where Grub will not be able to recover during the reboot. Grub is the bootloader that will be installed that allows you to pick and choose what operating system you're booting into. Um, if that's the case, we'll try to cover that topic in a later video. Uh, but for most people, uh, you'll go ahead and you will be welcomed with a clean Ubuntu installation. Once the installation is finished, you'll be prompted with this box. Go ahead and take the Restart Now option, and the computer will reboot and take you back to a Grub bootloader screen. During this reboot process, you will also be prompted to remove the live CD from the tray or from your computer, so go ahead and do that and press the Enter key. We'll let VirtualBox come back up and we will be greeted with our Grub boot screen. Now we can simply use the arrow keys to navigate down to either Windows 7 or to Ubuntu. Once you make the selection, simply press the Enter key and it will boot into the operating system of your choice. And as you can see, we are now back to Ubuntu 11.10. If I log in, then it will take me to the new Ubuntu desktop that we just installed. Now the next thing I typically do is verify that our other operating system still boots. From time to time you will bump into grub issues where the bootloader doesn't act right, it doesn't seem to recover right. You may need to restore that. So just to make sure, we'll go ahead and restart the computer. This will take us back to the grub boot screen. and We'll select Windows 7 and make sure we can still boot into our existing Windows 7 partition. Now simply use your arrow keys on the keyboard to mouse down to Windows 7 and hit the Enter key. This will go ahead and make Windows 7 boot and as long as everything's okay we will be brought to our Windows 7 login screen. From there we can log in like we always have and be taken to our desktop. Do note that you may see this disk check message. You can let it complete the disk check or you can go ahead and just hit any key to cancel it. I would recommend letting it complete. Uh, just that way you won't have to worry, be bothered with it later. Uh, but as you can see, we're now brought to our login screen. Go ahead and log in. And we're taken to our Windows 7 desktop that we had set up prior to installing the Ubuntu Dual Boot. Other versions of Linux use a similar installer. Ubuntu's installer has been changed with the last several releases. So other versions of Linux may not hold your hand through the installation quite like the Ubuntu installer does. If you're going to use another distribution or another version of Linux or even Ubuntu, you may want to do a little snooping around online just to make sure that you have the proper documentation for setting up dual boot for that system. A common misconception when installing systems for dual booting is that it's going to be something difficult or daunting to do. This used to be the case with older releases of Linux, but it's not so much anymore. Now it's pretty accessible. Pretty much anybody can do it. That wraps up this video. Be sure to check our next video which will cover using Wubi to install dual boot. Uh, Wubi is a Ubuntu tool. Uh, it makes installing the dual boot from within Windows very easy. If later you decide you want to remove the Ubuntu dual boot, it's as simple as booting into Windows and using the add remove program to simply remove that installation. 
So that's pretty handy. So we'll cover that in our next video. As always, swing by our site at techiesmarts.com. Look in our video description and in the description on the blog to find the links to our Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus pages. So once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.